My name is Randall Callanan, and I am a civil rights uh, lawyer, and I am here today with the family and friends of Antonio Armstrong, who just a few days ago was convicted of a murder on his third trial. And I don't see one single person that who has, has abandoned A.J. and thinks he's guilty. And it's obvious why. In the second trial, it was eight to four not guilty. Eight to four. And the only difference between the second trial and the third trial was DNA evidence that was miraculously found seven years after this tragedy. Seven years. That was the only difference. People believe in DNA. You hear it all the time. There's a million shows on uh, YouTube and on, on uh, television about DNA and how that solves crimes. People believe in it. So you got to have people telling the truth when it comes to this DNA. Now the lawyers did their best when this DNA came, came up. But after we filed the lawsuit, and after the verdict came down, an expert, a DNA expert who practices regularly in Harris County, including in the 178th District Court where Antonio was convicted, who has was, who was been appointed by that judge, and 10 other judges, and as well as the federal court, a very trusted DNA expert said to me, I filed a complaint about planting evidence to the uh, Texas uh, office, which, which um, investigates problems with DNA experts. And here it is. He gave it to me. The, D the defense did not have this. Maybe some of you have heard of Brady, Brady versus the, the state of Maryland. In that case, the Supreme Court said the prosecution must give over to the defense any potentially exculpatory evidence. And it's not up to the district attorney to determine what's the exculpatory evidence, because why would they? They are trying to convict. If it's potentially exculpatory, you give it over. So the criminal defense attorneys did not have this report by Dr. Robert Collins. And just let me read you who Dr. Robert Collins is. I am the complainant, Dr. Robert Collins. I have a PhD in molecular and human genetics from Baylor College of Medicine from the year 2000 and a BS in genetics from the Texas A&M University graduated cum laude in 1904. I have 14 publications in top-tier peer-reviewed journals and have been cited over 1,000 times in scientific journals. And he says their expert planted evidence in another murder case. Is it true? I don't know. This is a very respectable person. But at the very least, this should have been given over to the defense attorneys. The only difference from trial two where it was 8-4 not guilty, and the guilty was the DNA evidence. And they did not get this report. I have attached, which I sent to the media, the, um, the CV, a resume of Dr. Collins. Remember, this huge report, and this is just a report. There's like a whole bunch of attachments that go this with took hours and hours and hours. You know how much money he got paid to do this? Zero. He was doing this because he felt it had to be done. Mr. Collins has a laundry list of courts that appoint him, that trust him. There's, uh, looks like 12 listed in Harris County. Montgomery County, two courts. Galveston County, two courts. Fort Bend County, one court. And the federal court right downtown Houston. That was not fair. Everybody believes in fairness. All of these people here today, the family and friends who have not given up on AJ, believe in fairness. Fairness of the courts. Is this fair? 
not to give this to the defense so that they can look at it and see if there's something which they can possibly impeach their expert witness? The only new evidence that caused it to go from 8-4 not guilty to guilty. That's not fair. It's not fair at all. They should have handed it over. This is a very serious accusation. It's very lengthy by a prestigious individual made this accusation. And these accusations aren't made like, there isn't like 13 accusations against all of the uh, people who do DNA evidence. These are rare. And this was 2019. And this was also a capital murder case. And this was also a case where it took a long time to go to trial. And this is a case where Rossi took some DNA evidence, according to this expert, took some DNA evidence from some material that would knowingly contain the victim and went to court and said, this is actually from the suspect. And just basically taking DNA from the victim, which we know uh, is the DNA of the victim of the DNA, victim's DNA, and then claiming it was on the suspect. So we're here today to say, this is not fair. This is not the way Harris County should be doing things. This is not the way justice should be done. 8-4, not guilty, to guilty, based on potentially planted evidence. Um, I did want to, as, because this case is, is ongoing and there might be another trial and there's appeals and so forth, uh, the family and friends are not here uh, to uh, talk about the facts of the case or anything. However, I did want uh, Kay, uh, the uh, mother of Armstrong, Mr. Uh, Antonio Armstrong Sr., to, to say a few words. Good morning. I would like for Harris County, Houston, anywhere that's viewing what you all are streaming here today, I want everyone to know Antonio Armstrong Sr. was my son. My beautiful daughter-in-law, Dawn Armstrong, her parents are behind me, Keith and Ramona Whiteley, along with AJ's wife, family, all our family and friends are here, church members. I want you to know, if I had an inkling of a thought that AJ Armstrong, my grandson, killed my son and my beautiful daughter-in-law, we wouldn't be supporting him. We would not stand by him. We know he's innocent. We know he didn't do it. And I want you to know we're seeking justice. We won't stop until he gets justice. Uh, thank you. Do you uh, I have uh, sent all to all the media the actual report so that you could read it for yourself. And once again, everything I've said here today is nothing that I'm claiming or making, making up. It's all right here in this report. Does anybody have any questions? Do you know why it took Dr. Collins so long to come forward with this information after the conviction? Well, he didn't know who the expert was. He didn't know it was Rossi. Uh, that, was in my, that was in the lawsuit. He said that because the media, and I want to thank the media, because the media does make a difference. Media gets out the truth to the people. Without the media, he wouldn't have come forward because he said he went to uh, one of the media outlets, read the lawsuit, and saw that it was Rossi, and called me up and said, Rossi, well, that I had that complaint. Here's the complaint that I made. All this work, remember again, free. That nobody paid him to do this work. This was an after the fact, after the case was over, uh, complaint that he did when he saw that it, when he saw that Rossi potentially planted evidence. He was, he said planted evidence. I say potentially because, you know, I'm trying to be, you know, but he said planted. Do you know whose responsibility it was to call him, I guess, during the trial? To call, to call, for call his, who? Dr. Collins. How, how, how would anybody know about this? this? This is not public information. You cannot get this with an open records request. It is the duty of the prosecutor uh, and, the, and the expert, both, to say, oh, by the way, I did have this complaint against me, and you can look at that and, you know, cross-examine me about it. That's up to them. It's not up to the defense attorneys to go digging in for things that, 
How do they, they know about this complaint? This is Harris County. Population almost, uh, what is it now, almost 5 million people and hundreds of thousands of cases, uh, tens of thousands involving DNA and DNA experts. No, no criminal defense attorney can go looking at this stuff. And once again, this is not public. This is uh, a private. So without, without the media going out there and informing the public and talking, we wouldn't have found this. And that's the only way we've, we found this. Maybe someday, in the, someday, 10 years from now, maybe Rossi, somebody would have mentioned, I mean, not Rossi, but um, Dr. Collins would have heard about Rossi and said, oh, yeah, well, I filed a complaint. But since when he found out, then he knew. Plus, uh, plus, Mr. Collins is working on a bunch of cases right now. He's got a lot to do. Upon reading the complaint, what was your, the, for the first time, what was your initial reaction? Utter shock that it wasn't given to the defense. I mean, come on, this is a very serious complaint by a very prestigious person. Uh, did, did they forget about it? No, they did not forget about it. Uh, they knew about this, uh, and they needed to have turned it over. What do you think the reason was why they didn't? Because they have prosecutorial immunity. Because prosecutors cannot be sued uh, for monetary damages in their official capacity as prosecutors. So, as such, no one can sue them. So, when that happens, you sometimes get a little uh, uh, overboard. And he, the guy wanted a conviction, flat out. And apparently he was, he was willing to do this. He was willing to uh, take this very, very highly suspect evidence and put it into the court system and not tell the defense counsel about this, this um, complaint. So you're alleging that he knew about it and withheld the information? Uh, it's my opinion he knew about it, yes. The prosecutor said that they, the jury was confident in its decision without needing this blood evidence. So kind of yes, that's of course what you would say. Like, when, when you have bad evidence, what, of course, you would say after the case comes down is, oh, by the way, we didn't need that evidence. <laughs> that's, of course, what they would say to protect it. Protect it. That's, of course, what they would say. And they're not going to say, oh, yeah, uh, that blood evidence, that was all, that's what we needed, and we should have handed over that report. But they didn't, they didn't hand over the report, and that is, um, that, that's really bad. I mean, that's a, that's a high level of badness. <laughs> was the complaint ever investigated? Collins in 2019 was, was the, and why is that expert still being used, or what was the result of the investigation? Uh, the, 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 there was no uh, investigation to the complaint. They decided not to investigate it, and that can happen for many reasons. One is, um, guys, I'm a skeptical, skeptical civil rights lawyer. Uh, she works for the government, in this case Montgomery County, and there were a lot of police involved. And the agency is a government agency, so they maybe figured, yeah, well, this is too bothersome. But that's not the point, whether it's true or not. There's a bunch of accusations and evidence here in this report, excuse me, in this, um, this complaint, and it needs to be given uh, to, the, to the defense. You mentioned a case from 2019. Any others to your knowledge that this is no. involved No, no, just, just this uh, complaint. This, this is what was uh, revealed to me by Dr. Collins, who did it out of the goodness of his heart. All this work, this looks like it took many, many hours. Uh, to make this complaint, which he did for free, because he, he, he told me he felt he was obligated to do it because he thought there was planted evidence. And maybe uh, this complaint will finally bear some fruit. But after you know, making this complaint public, what are you hoping are the immediate next steps? Well, there is what's called a uh, motion for new trial, uh, which could come up. And a motion for new trial is something in the criminal case that can be filed within 30 days of the verdict. And the verdict was approximately three days ago. So that's in 27 days you can file a uh, motion for a new trial. And this can be brought up to uh, her honor because uh, this, was, this complaint has not been brought up. And perhaps the Honorable Kelly Johnson will look at this and say, yeah, that should have that should have been in the um, – and declare a, at least a mistrial. Do you know what that motion is? Uh, I'm not the criminal defense lawyer, but I, 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 my belief is that such a motion will be filed. In a recent interview, state prosecutors said they felt like the jurors were swayed by the 911 call made by AJ. What's well, your reaction to that? Of, cor of course they would say that. But once again, remember the only difference between uh, trial number two, where they learned about the 911 and everything else, was eight to four, not guilty. The only new stuff in the, in the uh, third trial was this, but this uh, likely planted evidence, DNA evidence. What well, was the jury vote in the first trial? I don't know. Actually, I tried to find out, but uh, I, I did not find out. I would like to find out. So you would like us to use the terminology likely planted evidence? Um, 
Oh, well, I mean, my belief is, I mean, it, my belief is planted. It was planted. If I had to, like, gamble, I would gamble that it was planted. If there was some, somebody who had the absolute knowledge, I would bet some money on that, <laughs> that, that was, it was planted. It's my belief it's planted, based upon everything that I see. And especially with this, this similar behavior in the past. And it's possible that because she wasn't reprimanded, uh, this expert was not reprimanded, she might have thought, oh, well, these agencies don't really don't care about this, so yeah, I'm going to do it again. You really think it's possible to plant that kind of evidence seven easily. years after the fact? Easily. Yes, easily, because, what it, because in the testimony, uh, the expert went to the property room right here. That's why we're in front of the property room, is because that's where the blood evidence and AJ's shirt was without the blood evidence, and they... And they were looking at them at the same time. They had apparently had the, both boxes open, and it was very easy just to transfer some of the blood from um, the uh, the evidence in two onto AJ's shirt, on, onto this little ta um, name, tag. name tag. Yeah. And I just would like to remind the people a name that name tag sticker is very small and if and if you look at AJ's the, let's say you take the front of the clothes and there's only one blood spatter let's say a blood spatter is somewhere in the clothes and you take that little sticker and just try to guess where it is and put put it on it that's like about a one out of a hundred chance that you're going to hit the right spot because you know it just just it just happened the only piece of blood just happened to be in that little spot here and not here 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 not and every, anywhere else that's at least a one out of a hundred chance if not one out of two or three hundred. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you coming out. It, it was the media who got us this um, complaint, and uh, thank you so, so much. And everybody here, thanks. Thanks the media for showing up.